My name's Larry Smith. Um, I am or was a Marine helicopter pilot in Vietnam. In Vietnam, I flew CH-46 helicopters. Uh, in the Army National Guard, I flew Hueys for 20 years and Blackhawks for the last three years that I was in. I don't remember the exact date, but it was in the early spring, I believe, of 1970. This particular day, we had two CH-46s and two UH-1 gunships um, trying to pick up uh, one or several heat casualties uh, on top of a hill. This, this particular reenactment of rescuing a downed pilot, it had to be pretty scary because you know that the enemy is going to be there doing everything they can to annihilate you and your only mission is to bring that one guy back regardless of the cost. We've been prepping for Rotorfest for months now. Um, getting really excited about it. A lot of us did a lot of reading on the blue teams uh, before we went in, um, customized our uniforms as they would have, so we went into a lot of detail there. The, the theme for the tactical yesterday was a downed airman rescue, and it was a very appropriate theme. It's something that happened, if not a daily, definitely absolutely weekly basis uh, during the Vietnam War. Typically, we flew with two gunships for uh, protection. Uh, we might have two UH-1 helicopter gunships, or if they were available, Cobras. And we always liked the Cobras because they flew faster, and uh, actually faster than we did, could get there before we did, and uh, prep the zone for us if there was any uh, unfriendly activity. So we had an aerial team, which was brought in by the Hueys, that was kind of to show more of a QRF, which would be a quick reaction force. They would have really been moving to get out there and locate that downed airman. We were going to be the first on scene, the blue team from the helicopter, and um, it was going to be our job to secure his position and wait for the ground troops to come in to further push the enemy back so we could then extract the pilot and get him back to the helicopter. Other helicopters had reported taking fire in the area, although there was none reported at the time that the medevac was called in. I was kind of a, a squad leader for the ground. I coordinated um, the movements of that element. I made sure that uh, the personnel were ready to go. I mean, ammo, weapons locked and loaded during the flight. That way, as soon as we hit the ground, we could go out and immediately start into our mission. Reenacting can really communicate the history in a different way than most people are used to. Most people are used to reading books or even seeing a movie of some sort, but it's not real. Um, I mean, it certainly wasn't real for me what the helicopter guys went through until I was hanging off the side of one, about to go in about 200 knots down an airfield. It was a pretty incredible experience that unless you actually live it or even see it, you can't imagine what it would be like. Being able to see an actual reenactment of a battle scene was enlightening because at, at the time of my service, I didn't really know what they were doing when they, when they left the base camp. I didn't realize how scary it would be for a young guy to go out into a field not knowing if he's going to live or die it just it just gives me an awareness of what they actually did and and what they had to do the the crew were all vietnam veterans you know the pilots everybody on that helicopter so um it definitely gave it uh, a real feel having you know having that that crew that's right you gotta take that seat right there okay. right. let's go Alright. Get my dump pocket ready. On your way out of the aircraft, you pull the bolt back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Which, which side are you getting out on? Just pay attention to the side of the runway. Once the bird goes up, we'll cross to you. Then we'll start moving out. If it's the other way around, you'll cross the left.
what I expected it to be at first, up, moving around a little bit, and getting a couple miles away from the airfield. It was different in the sense that being a Huey, you know, I've never ridden on one of those until you know yesterday for the event. We arrived at the scene, made contact with the people on the ground, um, and I started my approach down to the hilltop to land and, and pick up the casualty. Once they turned in though, and once the Cobra had caught up with us, um, the pilots pretty much flipped a switch and went full Vietnam mode. If you fly very, very low and as fast as you can go, they won't hear you coming, they won't see you coming. And um, they came in hot and fast. was going off behind my head. My crew check chief reported that we were taking fire. Um, okay, you know, that happens from time to time. You almost felt naked up there with no door on, no armor. I mean, I would not have wanted to do that in real life in a real fire. It would just be terrifying. The pilot of the other helicopter and his co-pilot both uh, told me later that they could feel the bullets coming through the floor of the cockpit. <laughs> Shortly after that, he started screaming over the intercom, we're on fire, we're on fire, we're burning. So my thought was, you know, plant this thing on the ground, shut everything down, let's get out of this so we don't turn into crispy critters. getting shot at, the guy that was circling had a backup, one of the wanted to come in and pick us up, and I said, you know, there's only room on top of this hill for one helicopter. And uh, once we actually landed, um, there wasn't a lot of gunfire at that point, but it was starting to, you could see the enemy starting to make a push towards where the pilot was. I told the story after I had left Vietnam. I remember I, I, I was I was almost sick at my stomach. I was sweating. I was struggling. You know that sort of thing. Seeing it in person during a reenactment was it was pretty awesome. It was pretty. Woo, man. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, we were able to hook up with uh, uh, Pilot Harkin very quickly and secure his position. We knew we weren't getting out of there, but I stayed on the radio and was able to talk to the Ford Air Controller and also to my wingman, who kept saying, you know, let me come in, let me come in. We had the QRF radio in once uh, they took contact uh, for any additional troop support. The Deuce and a Half comes in and there's other troops that dismount and, you know, assist in pushing the uh, VC out of the area. Helicopter came down and landed about 100 yards away from us, so we had a long trip to get there. I said, "Okay, Mike, now you can you can come in and get us the other the other H-46." But as I said, there wasn't room on top of that hill for two helicopters, so he was hovering with the front two thirds of his helicopter off the side of the hill and his ramp lower into the tall grass. It took us a few minutes to fight our way over there. Um, we had to do a couple leaps. My crew and everybody, we grabbed the grabbed the uh, casualties and doing the low crawl through the grass, you know, and up the ramp of this helicopter. We did take a casualty in the way where uh, one of our guys fell and uh, was shot in the leg, injured pretty badly. Um, so we had to help two guys up on the helicopter at that point instead of just one. <laughs> that crew with 
with their experience and their background, the helicopter ride was a definite, uh, a definite plus. <laughs> Both my uncles were in the cab. Uh, one was a pilot, one was a crew chief. So being up there and uh, getting a little taste of what they did, it really connected me with the veterans or with my family's story or with um, the history that I know from the textbooks. To me, living history is preserving the past. Simple as that. Uh, it's getting a bunch of people together that believe in the same thing you do and, uh, and, and practice the art of preserving history. I've always been interested in history. I, I love history. I think there's a big uh, failing in our educational system with, with showing people uh, history. History is really being cut down in our schools. And our children and subsequent generations are not getting the exposure to really the true history. I think the best way to learn history is, is to I mean, is, is the, not just from a book. I mean, it, you can read all the books in the world, but if you get, you know, if you, if you actually get to, to see uh, somebody who can show you, demonstrate the tactics, show you the equipment, uh, tell you a few stories, you know, for those guys that were there, we've always come away with a greater appreciation for the history of the time. So living history to me is really what it says. It is immersing yourself into the, the character with which you portray, but it's also giving the ac most accurate portrayal that you can give. Vietnam is a, is a war nobody wants to remember. It was the, the hated war. And these guys are trying to educate the people on what we did and how good we were at our jobs. And they do a fabulous job. They do. These people are great. This is a good way to learn. They do an awesome job. They, they explain things. They help you to understand what went on. I think that any veteran of any war should come out to these reenactments and get that feeling and get that, that brotherhood back. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I decided I want to be a reenactor, not just come as a veteran. In some cases, it helps veterans. You know, they kind of they can kind of come back and they can see that. You know, there are people that really cared, and there are people that still remembered. They're just so grateful to see people bringing back what they did and bringing it back to an accurate standpoint. The guys that were too young to have served in a particular war, the fact that they want to be says that they appreciate um, the experiences of those people who did. And I think that is very complimentary to the people who actually underwent the experience that other people want to, uh, you know, to try to share some of that and to try to uh, carry on the history and the tradition and to try to disseminate to that to the, you know, to the, to the greater public. This is a venue for average American citizens to show their respect and their honor for veterans and also to bring to light the sacrifices that they had endured for the freedoms that we enjoy today. And that is absolutely a foundational tenet of this organization. Well, I'd say 90% of the people in this country do not realize that freedom isn't free. There's a cost. It's American history. People need to learn about it. Because somebody's gotta remember. And somebody's gotta follow on, carry on. <laughs>